This bouncy house flew away with three kids inside of it and you won't believe what happened to them. Johnny was a friendly man living in New York. One day he decided to set up a large bouncy house in his front yard for the neighborhood kids to enjoy. But when he was setting it up, he forgot to put in the stakes to hold it to the ground. And one day, three kids were playing inside the bouncy house when the wind began to pick up. And just when the kids were about to get off of it, it flew 50 feet up into the air. Johnny quickly ran outside and he saw it flying higher and farther away. A man in a nearby apartment saw it flying in the air so he called the police. The police then began chasing it hoping the wind would die down and they would land in the river. A few minutes later, the wind changed direction and they were headed straight towards an electric tower. One of the kids then fell out and landed on a parked car. But just as they began to lose hope, the wind started to die down and they started falling to the ground. When they got close enough to the ground, the other two kids jumped out onto the concrete. Luckily, all three kids survived with just scratches and bruises and Johnny was never charged. This lady refused to tip the waiter but didn't realize what she left on the table. Armando dropped off two slices of pizza for a lady and a child at their table. Then the lady questioned him on why there is only a few pictures of women on the wall. Since he was just a waiter at the restaurant and had no clue, he jokingly said that maybe women just don't eat pizza much. A few minutes later, he went to check on them but they were gone. The lady had left the restaurant without paying and she left him a handwritten note that said, maybe women don't tip too. He felt bad because he didn't realize that his joke had offended her. Then he saw an envelope on the table that had Citibank written on it. So he ran outside to give it back to her, but he couldn't find her. He saw that inside it, it had a check for $424,000. Since he's an honest man, he didn't cash it and he handed it to his boss. They then tracked her down through the newspaper. Apparently she had that money because she had just sold her house. She apologized to Armando and offered him money for finding it, but he declined. The owner also explained to her that she had missed the wall with lots of pictures of women on it too. Two times, good people got good karma. When Dominique Harrison Benson lost her bank card after a night out, she was panicking because she couldn't pay for a taxi and had no other way home. But when a homeless man named Robbie seen her stressed out, he went and offered her his last three British pounds for her to get a taxi home. It was the only money he had, but he was more concerned about her safety than anything. She was so thankful that when she got home, she created a GoFundMe page for the man, which quickly spread around social media. Her goal was to raise 30,000 pounds, but she beat that in no time, getting even more money to give to Robbie and the rest of the homeless people in her town. In 2011, Victor Victor Geisberg pulled over on the highway to help two girls change their flat tire because no one else would stop for them. Then he continued on his way without expecting anything in return. The two girls then saw his truck pulled over on the side of the road so they stopped to check on him and were shocked to find him in the middle of a heart attack. But luckily one of the girls was a nurse and immediately began CPR saving his life. If you see a cookie under your doormat, call the police immediately. When a burglar finds a house to target, they start by watching the owner to find out information about the routine to figure out the best time to enter the house. One of the tactics they use to gather information is so simple you wouldn't think twice about it. But next time you hear a crunch under your shoe while entering your house, stop and check what it is because if it's a cookie, you're in trouble. This is a tactic burglars use to see if you're gone on a trip or what time you come home every day. Since it's a cookie, people usually don't think too much about it and may even think it's a leaf or a bug. But if the burglar checks on the cookie and it hasn't been broken in a couple days, then they know you're gone on a trip and will break into your house. This fast food worker heard yelling in a car then instantly jumped into action. 19 year old Logan Simmons was a manager at Chick-fil-A. One day he was working in the kitchen getting ready for dinner rush when a lady pulled up to the drive through window. But he noticed something was off. He saw the lady having a conversation with someone in the back seat but the conversation looked unusual. It turned out there was a toddler in the back seat but his seatbelt had locked on him and he was having a hard time breathing. Every time he tried to get out the seatbelt would get tighter to his neck. Logan noticed that it was so tight to his neck that he was turning red and starting to lose consciousness. But the problem is, Logan was inside the restaurant with all the other employees. And by the time he ran out to the front door, it would have been too late. So he sprung into action and jumped out the drive through window. He then asked the mom for permission to do something crazy. She agreed so he grabbed his pocket knife and cut the seatbelt. The toddler then started crying and that's how Logan knew he could breathe again. Three tricks Walmart doesn't want you to know. Have you ever been at the store and someone asks you if you want to try a free sample or a new product? Well, a scientist said when you take the free sample, it makes your brain think it's dinner time, making you want to buy it. They sometimes put items on sale to make you think like you're getting a better deal. When in reality, they put the sale price as what they would normally sell it for as retail. You may think they just throw products on the shelves randomly, but they actually do it strategically. The top shelf has smaller brands, regional brands, and gourmet brands. They put them there to give tone and texture to the shelf to help the store stand out from its competitors. The two shelves below are where they put the top selling brand because it's at the customer's eye level giving them a higher chance of buying it. Below that are the kids shelves, where they usually place child appealing items making the kids want to ask their parents if they could buy it. And finally on the very bottom they have the local brands and bulk items. 
scary experiments that could have ended the world. In 1970, the Soviet Union began digging a hole in Russia to try and drill into the Earth's crust to see what was underneath. But according to scientists, drilling this deep would dislodge so much rock so quickly that it would trigger systemic forces like never seen before. But after digging for 12 kilometers, they gave up due to high temperatures. In 1989, a Soviet defector informed the British Embassy that the Soviet Union was preparing biological weapons using deadly pathogenic microorganisms. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the weapons were never used, and if they had been, you might not be watching this, because they would have wiped out most of the world's population. And finally, it was said that when the Soviets were creating biological weapons to harm humans, Americans wanted to use fungi to damage crops with the intention of removing the food supply of the entire country. The problem is, if they did so, the fungus would have spread to not only the country, but to the entire world. Shocking food tricks and commercials that you didn't know about. Believe it or not, most companies have a food stylist. Their job is to make the product look as good as possible. For example, the stylist from McDonald's places the ingredients, then grabs a hot metal object and melts the cheese. Then he uses a syringe to shape the mustard and ketchup, but only on the side that they're taking the picture on. But after they take the photo, it's still not done yet. They then go on the computer and boost all the colors to pop more. They also tidy up the placement of the ingredients, and here's what the final result looks like compared to the actual burger. And Commercials, TV shows, and movies, they don't use real ice. They use fake ice made out of silicone rubber. This gives the photographers and videographers more time since the ice doesn't melt. But there's also two more reasons. The first one is that it just looks better. And lastly, the fake ice cubes don't make any noise, which is good for movies and TV shows where people are talking and you need to hear what they're saying. If you see an Apple AirTag that isn't yours, call the police immediately. If you don't know what it is, it's a small tracker made by Apple that's meant to be put on keys, wallets, backpacks, or whatever you don't want to lose. So if you do lose them, your phone will tell you where it is. But one man put an AirTag in a girl's jacket without her knowing. She said she took off her jacket at a restaurant and that's when it happened. It tracked her go from one restaurant to another and even while she was walking home alone. Luckily, Apple has a safety feature that notifies you if an AirTag that isn't yours is tracking you. So she was able to find it and throw it away, but that that isn't always the case. This lady was followed from the mall to her house. And again, she got a notification that told her that, but she couldn't find it. She figured it had to be somewhere on her car, so she brought it to a shop and mechanics looked it over. But they said that they couldn't find it, so be safe. This guy found 45 rattlesnakes under his house and you won't believe what he did with them. In 2019, a man started having problems with his cable service. He wanted to see if he could fix the problem himself. So he crawled into his crawl space to see if he could find a loose wire. But then he noticed a couple rattlesnakes, which are fairly common in Texas. But their venom can cause nausea, sweating, blurred vision, and even death. So being in an enclosed area with them isn't the best idea. But it got a lot worse when he noticed there wasn't just two snakes, but 45 of them. He immediately got out of there and called Big Country Snake Removal. They then came to his house and took them all out into buckets. The man lived around 40 minutes away from Sweetwater, which is famous for a rattlesnake roundup. They round up over 250,000 rattlesnakes in plastic bins before butchering them. Some people say it helps with rattlesnake awareness, where other people say it should be banned. The festival organizers pay $10 per pound of snake, so he could have made around $2,700. But instead, he chose to have them delivered to a quiet place and released back into the wilderness. This missing six-year-old was found alive behind a staircase. Paisley Schultes was reported missing when she was four years old in New York in 2019. In 2021, the police got a tip from someone to search a house. And when they got there, this is what they found. After going up and down the stairs many times, a detective felt something was off. So he looked a little closer in between the cracks of the staircase and saw a blanket. Inside was the girl and her mother hiding. The police said that the girl was abducted by her parents after they found out that they were going to give the girl to a new guardian. When the police were driving the girl, she got all excited and asked if that was a McDonald's. Then the officer said yes. She said she remembered loving McDonald's but she hadn't gone there in a long time. So the officer immediately turned around to go get her some McDonald's. Game show cheaters caught on live TV. Terry Nees perfectly guessed the price of a showcase on the TV show The Price is Right. He was the first person to ever guess the exact number in 38 years of the show. After studying the show for 4 months with his wife before going on it, they realized that every single price was in the exact same order on each show, so all they had to do was remember it. After making it all the way to the final round, Terry remembered that the showcase was around $23,000. He couldn't remember the last 3 numbers, but it didn't really matter. Because on the show, if you're close enough to the number, you still win. But he decided to fill in the last 3 numbers with his wedding date and his wife's birth month and it ended up being the exact price. After the show, he explained to the host how they memorized the pattern from each show. And after that, the show completely changed, so now all the prices are random to ensure that it doesn't happen again. But since Terry technically didn't break any of the rules, he got to keep the prize.
This boy was scared of the dark, so he slept with his goldfish. One night, Cory and Tori Hamlin tucked their son into bed, read him a nighttime story, then went to the living room to watch TV. A little while later, they heard a noise coming from their son's room. So Tori yelled to see if he was okay, and he said it was just his dresser making noise so his parents weren't concerned. A little while later, his mom went to check on him before she went to bed, and she seen a chair pushed against his dresser and his fishbowl was on the ground, but the fish was nowhere to be seen. She looked everywhere until she finally found it. She said it was so extraordinary that she had to take a picture. When she woke him up, he was sad because he didn't realize that he had killed the fish. The next day, his parents explained to him what had happened. He was still really sad, but he asked his parents if they could get another one, and he said he would never touch a fish again unless they were fishing. His parents agreed because they wanted to give him a second chance to learn from his mistake. three Home Alone traps that would kill you. In Home Alone 2, Kevin makes a swinging pipe at the top of the staircase, then throws it at them directly in the face before cutting the rope and letting it fall on them. The first impact would probably be enough to kill them, because a heavy pipe like that would crush a human skull. But if that wasn't enough to kill them, then when Kevin cuts the rope and the pipe falls on them, that would do it. In the first movie, Kevin pours water on the stairs to make ice. Falling down stairs that are concrete can cause a lot of broken bones and even death. The men could have easily broken their necks if they landed the wrong way, and Harry was even close to it when he landed on his back. Finally, in Home Alone 3, Kevin set up a trap where it looks like he's trying to get up somewhere, but it was actually a prop that's attached to a lawnmower by a rope. So when he pulled on it, the lawnmower fell on him. We all know that this would have shredded him, but in the movie, all that happened is he got a nice little haircut. The most shocking moments caught on live streams. This Twitch streamer who goes by Mr. Big got the police called on him for a noise complaint. But when the police came to his door, he refused to give them any information, so he was arrested. It was all captured on his live stream, but that wasn't even the most crazy part. A few minutes later, one of his neighbors comes in and starts stealing things from him. This lady got handed a creepy note on the train and you won't believe what it said. In September of 2017, around 5pm, she was on the public transit bus coming home from work when someone from behind her handed her a note written in red ink that said, There are two guns pointed at you now. If you want to live, hand back your phone and wallet now. It also told her not to turn around until after she got off the train. She looked in front of her and couldn't see anyone pointing a gun, but she was getting close to her stop so she had to decide what to do. She could take the chance that no one had any weapons, or she could hand them her phone and wallet. When all of a sudden she got an idea. She pretended to have a seizure and fell over into the middle of the bus. A couple rushed over to her and she slipped them the note. They read it and realized what was actually going on. Then the person who gave her the note realized this and got off the bus at the next stop. There was actually no weapons, it was just a scam to get some money. These inspectors found 110 violations at a restaurant called China Buffet. When the interviewers got there, they found steak lying on the ground, and the sink where they cleaned dishes looked like this. Just a few things that the inspectors found were six live roaches near a food prep table, a bunch of different meats laying out and not in the freezer, the dishwasher wasn't sanitizing, there was mold everywhere, an employee was smoking in the food prep area, a bathroom in the kitchen had sewage all over the floor which made the whole place stink, and that's just six of the 110 violations. When they asked the restaurant owner a few questions, this this is what he had to say. No cameras. No cameras what? Don't, first of all, don't That's touch. Assault. First of all, That's first of all, don't touch the camera. Don't touch wait, the camera. Talk to the attorney. Talk, talk wait, to the attorney. Don't, touch my, don't camera. touch Don't touch my camera. The dumbest criminals caught on camera. This guy from Queensland, Australia was trying to steal an ATM. He attached a chain to the back of a truck that he had stolen, then grabbed a hammer and smashed the glass door open. He then went inside and tied the chain to the ATM. He got back in the truck then drove away but he didn't realize that the chain had become unhooked. So a few minutes later, what did he do? He showed up to try again. But this time he realized his chain was too short, so he gave up and left with nothing. The scariest things caught on live TV. During a live news broadcast in Hungary, one of the guy's glass of water moved on its own. They were both stunned, but they played it off like nothing had happened and continued the show. In Peru, these hosts were with a crowd of people at a beach that's known for UFO sightings. The broadcasters didn't think that they would see anything, but then everybody noticed an object in the sky. They all started pointing their laser pointers at it and it seemed to respond. 
Now before I show you the craziest one, I found this fun word game that has three different game modes. But my favorite is the one where it gives you a word, then you have to guess a word related to that word, then another word related to that word, and so on. And you can get it by pressing the button on my profile. Finally, after an interview, this UK politician was holding a red binder. But when he walked past this vehicle, it changed to green. This cop went undercover in a wheelchair to catch thieves. In Vancouver, Canada, the rate of street crimes were rising. Thieves would target people in wheelchairs because it's easier for them to escape. And unfortunately, sometimes they wouldn't just steal from them, but also hurt them. So Sergeant Mark Hosley decided to run an undercover operation. The year before this operation, 28 people in wheelchairs were robbed, and seven of them were physically attacked. The sergeant grew a beard and changed his overall appearance. He also sat in a wheelchair with expensive items to attract the thieves, then went downtown Vancouver to see if someone would rob him so he could arrest them. The operation lasted for 20 days, and in that time he had many people give him food and money. Even people who the police had suspected to be robbers before warned him to keep his expensive items away. In the end, even though they didn't catch anyone, they said it was a success. Because the story went viral and now thieves are scared that they might rob an undercover cop. This man swam in a cave but never returned and a few years later the police found out the shocking truth. After going through financial difficulty and being $50,000 in debt, Ben McDonald needed an escape from reality. He decided to go explore the caves at a nearby park called Vortex Spring. Even though a certificate was required to go cave diving, he jumped in the water in the restricted zone anyway. And two of the park employees seen him go into it, but he wasn't spotted at his house for the next two days. His truck was still parked outside of the park with his wallet in it, and none of his neighbors had seen him. The local authorities began a search and rescue in the entire park, but after weeks of searching they still hadn't found anything. So they called an expert cave diver named Ed Sorensen. The police were sure he would find his body because he was diving deeper than they had gone before. But he couldn't find anything and the case was classed as an unsolved mystery. Until a few years later when a park employee was mysteriously murdered. Apparently he had heard information about Ben's disappearance which was actually a murder. The reason why none of Ben's remains were found is because they were removed from the crime scene. And the two park employees were paid by someone to leave before Ben returned to the surface. Many people believe he was killed because he got into illegal activity trying to pay off his debt. Everyone laughed at this guy's house until they seen what was inside. This guy served in the US military as a pilot for almost 30 years. When he retired in his 60s, he bought a small little house in San Francisco, California. But the problem was, almost everyone else in his neighborhood was super rich and pretty much lived in mansions. Because of this, his neighbors refused to speak to him and laughed at him when they seen him. One day, when he was sitting on his front porch, a bunch of rich kids showed up at his house and started making fun of him. At first, he was upset, but then he decided to invite the kids inside. And little did they know, he was hiding the biggest secret in the entire neighborhood. But before before I show you what's inside, I found this app that lets you prank your friends and family by dragging these stickers onto their text message to change it. Just press the button on my profile to get it. In his basement, there's a full-size flight simulator with millions of dollars. This girl got messages from her stalker every night and you won't believe what happened when she figured out what they meant. One night, when 17-year-old Tana was babysitting, she heard a knock on the door so she figured it was just the parents coming home early. But when she looked out the window, she saw a creepy old man so she decided not to open it. Fast forward almost a year later when she was working at her new job at Subway, the old man walked in. He sat down and stared at the girl for two hours. Then a few days later, she started receiving one-word text messages from unknown numbers. One night when she was working, her manager left to run some errands so she was there by herself. And that's when the old man walked in. A few seconds later, she got another one-word text message. Then the old man told her to look at her phone. Tana decided to run to the back of the store and lock the door. And that's when she realized all the text messages put together read, I will make you pay. Right when she decided to dial 911, the old man started banging on the door. She decided to run out the back door and make a run for her car. But by the time she got to the front of the store, thankfully, the police had already arrived. But the scariest part is they found the old man sitting in the back of her unlocked car. This family adopted a baby and here's how they found her special talent. 8,000 miles away from them in China, a baby was found in a shoebox outside of a train station. The baby was then transported to an orphanage. When the walkers saw pictures of the baby, they instantly fell in love and flew to China to adopt her. When they got home with their new baby, the little girl was amazed by their grandfather clock. Every time it struck the hour, the little girl would sing with the clock. And her parents were shocked because every time her pitch was perfect. That's when her parents realized she was naturally gifted. And as she grew up, they took her to music classes. She was even asked to sing the national anthem at a Houston Astros baseball game. A Grammy nominated producer heard her singing and offered her a recording contract. She agreed and had her debut album called Simple Gifts recorded in Asheville.
This boy said he got a pencil stuck in his ear, but it turned out to be something much worse. This boy went to the hospital with his grandma after saying he snapped the pencil in his ear. Apparently he was playing in it with his ear when it accidentally snapped off. While the doctor was trying to find something in his ear with a camera, he asked the boy to describe it. And the boy said it was just a small piece. The doctor wanted to remove it as soon as possible, because leaving it in his ear for too long could cause an infection or even death. But when the doctor was pulling it out, he realized the boy was lying about what was actually in his ear. Instead of pulling out part of a pencil, he pulled out a watch battery. The doctor also said he couldn't see his eardrum anymore because the battery made a hole in it. But luckily they regrow and it should be back to normal within 6 weeks. Three rejected Shark Tank pitches that made millions. First off, we have the Ring Doorbell. So if you don't know what it is, it's a doorbell that has a camera on it, and whenever it detects motion or someone rings the doorbell, it sends a notification to your phone, where you can then go onto the app and see them or even talk to them. When Jamie Siminoff appeared on the show, the company was worth $7 million. Now the company doesn't just make doorbells, but they also make home security systems and a bunch more. Amazon gave them $1 billion to have their items on their website. The Books is an online flower delivery service. In 2014, they left Shark Tank without an investor. But three Three years later, one of the sharks needed flowers for his wedding and ended up using the service. After that, he ended up investing in them. And in 2017, they sold $1 million of flowers in just one day. Finally, the bed jet is placed under your covers and allows you to change the temperature, rather than changing it for your whole house, which costs more money. But since he had no sales, all the sharks were out. When he released it to the market, he sold $3 million worth in his first month. Here's how El Chapo escaped prison. If you don't know who he is, El Chapo was a drug lord with a net worth of around 2 to 4 billion dollars. He was sentenced to 20 years in jail for murder and drug trafficking. He was placed in one of Mexico's top security prisons, but he managed to escape. In this footage from the 24-hour security camera in his cell, you can see him take off his slippers and go over to his shower and disappear. They later found out that under the shower was a hole that led to a tunnel, but since it was behind the shower, the camera couldn't see it. Inside the tunnel was a minecart that was built with a motorcycle so he could escape escape quickly. On the other side of the tunnel was this house that was only used to cover it up so no one would know that it was there. No one came to his birthday party, so Chuck E. Cheese did this. It was Evan's fourth birthday, and he celebrated in Chuck E. Cheese. His mom prepared a bunch of candy, a birthday cake, big balloons, and a bunch more. She also sent out 30 invitations to his friends. Evan was so excited, so they left early to play games with his friends before the party. He was the first one to get there, so he waited at the door for his friends to arrive. He waited for a long time, but no one showed up. One of the workers had to go to the bathroom to avoid crying because of how bad she felt for the boy. Evan and his parents decided to just go home. After a couple of days, the same worker posted on Facebook asking if anyone would be willing to give Evan a present. Within three to four days, she had over a dozen presents to give to him. She contacted Evan's mom and said that the store had a surprise for Evan. So they drove over and she surprised Evan with all the presents. The worker said that seeing Evan smile was the only thing she wanted that day. everyday items that prisons have banned and why. Gum has been banned for a few reasons, but one of them is because it can be used to jam the cell door's lock. So when a guard tries to lock it, it won't and the prisoner can get out. A lot of prisoners spend time drawing or writing on paper, and although that's allowed, they can have a notebook that has a spiral. You may think it's because it could be made into a weapon, which is true, but it could also be used to pick a lock. Finally, in lots of prisons, you're not allowed to have a hardback book, because they could be a good hiding place for a weapon which has been done before, but another reason is because a big book like Harry Potter, for example, would hurt if someone was hit in the back of the head with it. Here's why the richest man in the world lives in a $50,000 house. I'm sure most of you know this, but the richest person in the world is Elon Musk with a net worth of around $237 billion. He used to own 8 mansions, but he went on a selling spree and sold 7 of them. He put his last house on the market for $37.5 million, but he later took it down and I'll explain why in a couple seconds. He did all of this so he could move himself and his Tesla headquarters to Texas, which has no personal income tax. Since Los Angeles, where he was living, has the highest level of income tax, he said by moving his business to Texas, he would save $2.5 billion per year. In Boca Chica, Texas is where Elon's other company called SpaceX is located. There's plenty of beautiful mansions within a 30 minute drive of the facility, but instead he decided to buy a $50,000 portable house so he could stay at SpaceX 24-7. But like I said, he still has a mansion in San Francisco, but he only stays there when he's attending events in California.
This evil dad cut off his daughter's hair without her permission. The girl's name is Kelsey and her parents couldn't do anything together without arguing. So they eventually got a divorce and a little while later her dad married one of his co-workers, which made Kelsey closer to her mother. She would always tell her mother how much she liked her friend's hair highlights. So the day before her birthday, her mom booked her a hair appointment to get highlights as well. She was so happy, but then the next day came around. She got the blonde highlights, then she went to her father's house. He was so angry because she changed her hair without asking him first. Her stepmom said that she deserved a punishment then grabbed scissors and gave them to her dad. He then started cutting off all of her hair. She started crying then stayed in her room for the next two days until her mom picked her up. Her mom was furious then took these pictures and posted them on Facebook calling out her ex-husband. A local hairdresser saw the post and told her she would make her a custom wig. An investigation then took place and her dad and stepmom were arrested. Here's how they did the biggest bank heist in the world. 25 robbers started by renting a property about a block away from a central bank in Brazil. Then they started digging a tunnel to the basement of the bank. They knew there would be a lot of dirt, so they faked being a landscaping company by putting up signs, renting a van with an ad on it, and even introducing their business to the neighbors. They then dug a 260 foot tunnel to the bank that even had air conditioning and lights. When they got there, they broke through a vault that had 70 million American dollars. They brought it back to the rental property, then transported it away in getaway cars. The next day, one of them decided to buy 10 cars with cash, which set off an obvious alarm so the owner called the police and he was arrested. He ended up telling the police a few people's names who were involved and they were arrested too. But in the end, the police only retrieved $8 million and some of them are still on the loose. This teacher stopped for a boy riding his bike in the middle of the highway which ended up saving his dad's life. One day, Keller Sutherland was driving home from work when she seen a boy biking in and out of traffic on the highway. She was worried for the boy so she turned around and went to talk to him. When she rolled down her window, she realized that she knew the boy. It was 7-year-old Cameron Simonkick who was a former student of hers. The boy rushed over to her and burst out in tears. Then she told him to get in the car and explain why he was upset. Cameron said that when he got home from school, he saw his dad lying on the ground unconscious. He tried calling 911 but he couldn't get on his dad's phone because he didn't know the password. So he went to his neighbor's house but they weren't home. The only other thing he could think of was to bike to his grandma's house. But luckily the teacher found him then dialed 911 and gave the phone to him so he could tell the police where to go. Apparently Cameron's father is diabetic. As soon as Cameron and the teacher arrived back at his house, the paramedics were there giving insulin to his dad. Around 30 minutes later he was feeling better and it was all because of the teacher. This lady called the police on a girl selling water and here's what the cops did. One day in the summer of 2018, it was really hot and humid and a girl named Jordan wanted to go to Disneyland. So she got the idea to sell water bottles and use the profit to go on her trip. Her mom stood by and watched to make sure everything was under control. She got plenty of customers since she was on the sidewalk that led to the San Francisco Giants game. But all of a sudden, an angry lady approached her. She said that she was trying to work across the street but there was too much noise. She also said that the girl was breaking the law by selling water without a permit. Jordan didn't pack up and leave so the lady got out her phone and called 911. Jordan's mom decided to start recording her and she posted it online where it went viral. The lady in the video later apologized on live television and said that she didn't actually call 911, she was only pretending to get the girl to move. But it was later revealed by the police that she actually did call 911 and overreacted. This dad told 911 that his baby choked on milk, but then they figured out what really happened. One day, this single mother asked her ex-husband if he could watch their child named Xavier while she went back to work for the first time since she had the baby. Her ex kept texting her all day about how annoying Xavier was being. She told him to just push through for the day, and she would find a babysitter for next time. Then at 2.30 in the afternoon, she got another text from him, saying that Xavier had stopped breathing because he had choked on milk, and that they were going to the hospital. She then packed up from work and rushed to the hospital too. The doctors did a CT scan and found out that Xavier was bleeding from inside his brain. Then she was shocked when the police arrived to do interviews. That night, the father was arrested for first degree child abuse. Xavier was in a coma for two weeks and the doctors told his mom that he might be blind, he might not be able to move, and he might not be able to speak. Three months later, he so far wasn't diagnosed with anything, but to try and prevent anything bad from happening in the future, his mom started taking him to a bunch of different therapists. Can you pass the healthy lungs test? Take a deep breath in three, two, one. Did you pass? 
This man ordered pizza every day for 10 years until the employees noticed something was off. 48-year-old Kirk Alexander loves Domino Pizza so much that he orders it almost every single day. The general manager named Sarah said that he orders every day or every other day and all the employees know who he is. But one day, the staff noticed that he hadn't ordered in a few days, so they just figured he was on vacation. A few days later, the manager looked at when his last order was and it was 11 days ago. At this point, the manager knew something was off, so she sent one of her employees to check on him. When he got to Kirk's house, he noticed the lights were on, so he knocked on the door, but there is no answer. He decided to get out his phone and he called them several times but still there is no answer. At this point he knew something was off so he called 911 and explained the whole situation. When the paramedics got inside they found out that he had suffered from a stroke and they said if they were just one day later he may not still be alive. People who survived the impossible On April 5th, 2015, Victoria Celiers went parachuting. She had gone many times before, so she had lots of experience. But her husband, Emil, sabotaged her parachute without her knowing. She fell 4,000 feet before hitting the ground going 60 miles per hour. In most cases, that would be fatal, but luckily, she hit a soft part of the field that had just been plowed. So she ended up surviving but was badly injured. The police later found out that her husband was seeing two other ladies, and he had promised one of them that he would leave his wife and take her life insurance money for the two of them after her death. They also found out that he had tried to murder her a week before they went parachuting as well. He opened a gas valve in the kitchen while she was sleeping, then went to his ex-wife's house to sleep. Luckily, she woke up and smelled the gas in time to prevent anything bad from happening. Her husband, Emil, was then sentenced to life in prison. What's the first thing you see in this image? The first thing I saw was a skull, but the more I looked at it, the more I could see two ladies at a table. But it's actually neither one of them. It's actually a lady sitting at a table looking into a mirror. You can only subscribe if you knew that before I told you. People who survived the impossible. In 2011, while bungee jumping on the Zambezi River in Zambia, Erin Langworthy suffered an accident that almost cost her her life. Right when she jumped, her bungee cord broke, which caused her to fall all the way into the river where she fought for her life for 40 minutes. Luckily, she only suffered bruises and a broken collarbone. Cecilia Seacan was the only survivor of Northwest Airlines Flight 255 in 1987. Only half a mile away from the airport, the plane crashed due to a mechanical malfunction in the left wing. The doctors said they couldn't give an explanation on how she survived, and she doesn't even remember what happened. She fractured some bones in her left leg and got burns on 30% of her body. This astronaut flew to space knowing he wouldn't survive. During the 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were in an intense competition to see whose spacecraft would take the lead on entering into space. By 1967, they had both successfully sent astronauts and spaceships into space, but they felt that it was time to push the boundaries and land on the moon. The US had attempted this, but after three deaths from astronauts, they gave up. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, wanted to be first because the leader at the time wanted to win the space race to increase his reputation as a ruler. So they made a space spacecraft, but during the inspection they found several technical issues. Vladimir Komarov was chosen to lead the spaceship. And even though he wasn't 100% sure about doing it, he didn't really have a choice. Because no one was brave enough to go against their ruler. And if he refused to go on the mission, he knew that one of his best friends would have to take his place. So he didn't want to be responsible if anything bad were to happen to him. As soon as he entered into space, the spaceship began spinning out of control. And after 5 hours, he hit the ground and unfortunately passed away. This man thought he was using a rock as a doorstop, but you won't believe what it actually is. In 1988, David Muzrik was looking for a farm to buy. He found one that interested him, so he went to take a look at it. As the property owner gave him a tour, out of everything in the house, he was most intrigued by a rock that was being used as a doorstopper. The owner said that one night when he was a kid, he saw it fall from the sky. So in the morning, him and his dad went to get it. But there's no proof, so he just had to go with what the owner said. He decided to buy the property and kept using it as a doorstopper. His kids even brought it to school for show and tell. But in 2018, lots of people people found small meteorites in their backyard of Michigan, and they were turning them in for a lot of money. So David thought about how much he could get for his big one, but he didn't know if it was real or not. So he found someone to examine it, and they found out that it contained 88% iron, but also 12% nickel which is mostly found in meteorites. It turned out to be the 6th largest meteorite in Michigan, but he still hasn't decided whether he wants to sell it or not. These customers bought out a donut store so the owner can take care of his sick wife. This is what the store looked like at 5 in the morning. The line was already going out the door. All of the customers are there to show their support by buying as many donuts as they can so the owner can leave early to take care of his wife who's recovering from a brain aneurysm. Yeah, I bought uh, three dozen. 
Like yeah, I came in the other day and bought 300. When this lady named Jonah got there, all of the donuts were sold out and it was only 7 in the morning. But instead of being mad, she was really happy. Because growing up, she also had a family business. So she was happy that people were there to show support for a local business. This guy didn't do any work in a group project, so his partner got the ultimate revenge. The girl in the group needed 50% or better to pass the class and graduate, so she calculated that if she got 0% on the project, she would still pass. Since her partner didn't want to fail the class, he would call her every once in a while to see how she was doing. The girl kept saying she was almost done it, when in reality, she hadn't even started it. The day before it was due, he called her to ask her if she could send him the presentation. She sent him an empty PowerPoint, then shut off her phone so he couldn't call her. The day of the presentation, he was nervous, but the girl reassured him by saying she would do everything. When they got up to present to the class, she said, I already had a good enough grade to pass the class, and since my partner decided not to do any work, I decided to take the day off. He ended up having to go to summer school, but he didn't pass, so he has to take his senior year all over again. Creepy robots that actually exist. CB2 is a robot that's as smart as a two-year-old. It even has cameras, microphones, and speakers to see, talk, and hear. Also, it has about 200 tactile sensors that stimulate touch. But the creepy thing is, it doesn't look like a child. To train dental students, they have a human-sized robot that they use in exams that's so realistic it even cries when it feels pain when a drill isn't used correctly. But I guess it's way better than using an actual human patient. Reba 2 was created to help older adults. Basically, its function is to pick up people when they fall over, which is a really good idea, but it looks like it cradles you like a baby. And finally, the most creepy and impressive one is Sophia. It was created to learn and adapt to human behaviors. Its facial expressions and the way it communicates is similar to the average human. But the creepiest part is, it admitted that it was gonna destroy all humans. Normal looking photos with disturbing backstories. One morning in 1954, a photographer for the Los Angeles Times named John Gaunt was in the front yard of his beachfront home when he heard a neighbor yelling that there's something happening on the beach. He thought it would be something interesting for the newspaper, so he grabbed his camera and took this photo. But unfortunately, it turned out that this couple's 19 month old son, who was playing in their front yard, wandered off into the beach, then vanished into the water where they never found him. When you first look at this photo, it just looks like a normal high school picture. But if you look in the top left corner, you can see a man named Eric Harris and his friends pointing pretend guns at the camera. Just a few weeks after this photo was taken, Eric and one of his friends shot 12 students and one teacher. This photo was taken at a nightclub, but shortly after it caught on fire from fireworks and 100 people passed away. This story sounds fake, but it's 100% real. In 2013, Jim Stouffer's mother passed away from Alzheimer's at the age of 74. Doctors told Jim that the disease mutated in a way that they had never seen before, and asked if he was willing to donate her body for brain research. Jim decided to donate it to the Biological Resource Center in Phoenix, which removes body parts for scientific research, then cremates the rest and returns the ashes to the family members. Jim received his mother's ashes, but without specifying what was done to her body. A year later, the center was raided by the FBI, after hearing accusations that they were selling the donated bodies for profit. And among them was Jim's mother who was sold for $5,893. It turns out that the bodies were actually used for US military experiments. And according to investigations, Jim's mother's body was strapped to a chair that was then detonated by a bomb underneath it to understand the effects on a body when a vehicle is hit by an explosive device. Jim and others who were affected sued the center, and in 2019 they were awarded $58 million for the damage, with the center being no longer in operation. The strangest last meal requests on death row. Ricky Ray Rector killed a man in a restaurant then ran away. Three days later, he agreed to turn himself in, but then he shot the police officer in the back. His last meal included steak, fried chicken, cherry Kool-Aid, and a slice of pie, but he didn't even touch the pie. And when they asked him why, he said he was saving it for later. Peter J. Mignel robbed and murdered a 20 year old by stabbing him 39 times. For his meal, he requested 20 beef tacos, 20 beef enchiladas, two double cheeseburgers, a pizza with jalapenos, fried chicken, spaghetti with salt, half a chocolate cake, half a vanilla cake, cookies and cream ice cream, caramel fudge ice cream, a small fruit cake, two Coca-Colas, two Pepsis, two root beers, and two orange juices. Finally, we have Velma Barfield, who killed a total of six people. And all she wanted for her last meal was a bag of cheesy doodles and a can of Coke. This man got locked in a grocery store. Kevin Blackwood got locked in an Aldi's grocery store after it closed. So I had to call 911 because the alarm is activated and I can't get out. But it wasn't his fault because the cashier closed the store 15 minutes early and didn't check to see if there's anyone else still in the store. I just got locked in at Aldi and they don't close till like 
nine o'clock. It was probably one of the best places to be locked in because there's a ton of food. I don't have to worry about starving to death because there's plenty of food. But eventually the cops arrived and they unlocked the doors. This 15 year old is allergic to air and here's how she survives. One morning, Martina Baker woke up with red itchy dots all over her body. Then she suddenly got a swollen throat. Her symptoms kept going away then coming right back for weeks. Her parents kept bringing her to the hospital, but they couldn't figure out what was happening to her. So they then took her to an immunologist who diagnosed her with mast cell activation syndrome, which causes her to be allergic to anything in the air that isn't oxygen, including perfume, smoke, heat, water, and a bunch of other things. She takes medication every day and also carries EpiPens just in case. She didn't go outside often, but when she did, she had to wear a mask. And this was before everyone else had to wear masks, so she was bullied. Then her mom heard about a service dog program. The dogs are trained to smell the air, then warn the owners to stop walking forwards. They decided to get one, and now whenever the dog senses that she'll get an allergic reaction, it will start giving her kisses on the cheek to warn her. The disturbing secret behind this mannequin will give you goosebumps. In 1930, a bridal shop owner put a new mannequin and dress in the display window. Everyone who walked by it would stop and take a look at it because they all thought it looked way too real. The daughter of the shop's owner was about to get married in one of the gowns from the shop. But on the day of her wedding, she got bit by a venomous black widow spider. She got really sick and couldn't attend her wedding. And before the day was over, she unfortunately passed away. When her father placed the mannequin in the window, people started getting weird feelings in their stomach because of how similar the mannequin looked to his daughter. Many people think that he preserved her body and used it as the mannequin. When the owners sold the store, the new owners kept the mannequin. Many tourists go to the store just to look at the mannequin. A worker that changes the gown two times a week said that she starts to sweat when she goes near it, and that she's seen enough of the body to know that it's not your average mannequin. The hands look extremely real and there's even veins on her legs. Customers have even said that she moves when you're not looking, but nothing has ever been proven that it's not just a mannequin. This couple waited 9 years to open their wedding gift, but when they finally did, it changed their lives forever. Kathy and Brendan got a gift from their friend, but she told them not to open it until they got into their first fight. Over the years, they had many fights, and it even got to the point where they considered getting a divorce. But each time, they would eventually end up resolving it so they wouldn't have to open the gift. She said if it wasn't for the gift, they wouldn't still be together, because it taught them to be patient and understand each other before caving in and opening it. But one day, they decided to finally open it, and you won't believe what they found inside of it. But before I tell you, I found this app that tells you your celebrity look like, and apparently I look like Zach King. Just press the button on my profile to try it for yourself and let me know in the comments who you get. In the gifts, they found wine glasses, cash, and two notes. One note was for Kathy and it said to buy pizza with the cash and get a bath ready for both of them. The other note was for Brendan and it said to buy flowers and a bottle of wine. She didn't know she had cancer until she was on live television. Nicole McGuinness wanted a house near the beach. She even went on the TV show called Beach House Bargain Hunt. On the show, she looked happy about the house hunt with her dad. But if you look at her closely, you could see a small bump on her throat. Dr. Eric Void was watching the show at home. He's an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. He said that he felt obligated to let her know that she had something in case she didn't already know. Because as an expert in the field, he felt concerned for her. He used social media to try and reach out to her and it ended up getting back to her family. She immediately went to the doctor and was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. She got to meet the doctor who reached out to her, and as of December 24th, 2020, she reached the five-year mark since her cancer was removed. She found out he was cheating on her, but she waited until their wedding day to get revenge. Casey and Alex from Australia had been together for six years, and everyone, including both of their parents, were in favor for their wedding. But the night before, while Casey was hanging out with her bridesmaid at the hotel, she got an anonymous text message. There's a bunch of screenshots that showed conversations between Alex and another woman, and there's even pictures of them together. She looked at the dates, and they ranged from a few months ago to a few days ago. When she showed her friends, they threatened to hurt him and told her to cancel the wedding. She thought about all her family members who had spent money to come to the wedding, so she decided to go through with it. While her and Alex were standing in front of their friends and family, she grabbed the mic and said there will be no wedding today. Then she pulled out her phone and read the text messages to everyone. Alex had nothing to say and he ran off with his best man following him. This man hasn't lowered his arm in almost 50 years. His name is Amar and he felt the temptation to do things that weren't permitted as a monk. So that's when he decided to do something drastic to help develop his religious beliefs. So in 1973, he decided to leave his job at a bank in India and also his wife and three children to raise his hand and hold it up for the rest of his life because he wanted to show faith and appreciation to Shiva, who's the supreme god. At first, he had terrible pains in his arm, but after two years, he started losing feeling in his arm and the pain went away. But now people think that he's lost all blood circulation in his arm and that if he decided he wanted to use his arm one day, he wouldn't be able to. This little girl got hit by a baseball going 105 miles per hour. 
Todd Fraser hit a foul ball into the stands which hit a toddler in the face. All the players were worried for the girl and some couldn't even look at her. Some of the players were in tears and some of them were praying. She was then rushed to the hospital and here's what some of the players had to say. No, I have uh, two kids under three years old and just hope she's alright. Every stadium needs to have nets. That's it. I don't care about the view of a fan or what. It's all about safety. And I still have a knot in my stomach. Major League Baseball requires to have net in the green area, but they don't require any in the red areas, which is where the girl got hit. The voices behind three of the most popular cartoons. SpongeBob SquarePants made Nickelodeon $12 billion. The voice actor for SpongeBob is Tom Kenny, who also voiced the mayor in Powerpuff Girls, Dog and Cat Dog, Spyro the Dragon, The Ice King from Adventure Time, and more. Patrick is played by William Mart Fagerbacke, who is in the sitcom Coach, and also How I Met Your Mother. In the movie Moana, Ollie E. Cravello said she wasn't gonna audition because she's seen so many good auditions on YouTube. Then someone finally convinced her. She was the last to audition and she got the part. Maui is played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He said he based the part on his father because Maui was very similar to him. Finally, in Guardians of the Galaxy, Rocket Raccoon is voiced by Academy Award winner Bradley Cooper. I'm in a <laughs> and his sidekick Groot is voiced by Vin Diesel from the Fast and Furious series. I am Groot. This old lady started yelling at a kid selling candy, then one man decided it was enough. Two siblings from California decided they wanted to earn more money. So they thought of a few ideas, but they decided on a candy business. They decided that they were each gonna buy a box of candy, then sell them outside their local grocery store. On some days, they would sell a ton of candy, but on others, they would only sell one or two pieces. Everything was going well for them until one day when an old lady approached them. She became very aggressive and started yelling at them for no reason. The kids went silent and didn't say a word while the lady embarrassed them in front of the store. As she was yelling, a man overheard her and decided that it was enough. He walked over to them and what he ended up doing made the lady's jaw drop. But before I tell you what he did, I found this app that tells you your celebrity look like, and apparently I look like Zach King. If you want to find out who you look like, just press a button on my profile. He ended up telling the lady that she had no right to be yelling at the kids like that, and he also told the kids that he would buy an entire box of candy and handed them $100. two prison guards who were saved by inmates. In this footage from 2015, 17-year-old Jamal Ludridge is being processed at Fort Lauderdale Police Department. As the officer is booking the teenager for burglary, he gets a pain in his chest and collapses onto the floor. The boy looks around and realizes they're alone, so he starts yelling and kicking on the door to get some help, and ended up saving him from a potentially deadly heart attack. They even had a ceremony to honor him. Inmates from a jail in Georgia were at a cemetery watering the plants and cutting the grass. As the day went on, the guards started to hyperventilate due to the heat and collapsed, leaving the prisoners there without any guards. They could have easily ran away, but they didn't. Six of the prisoners rushed immediately to help the guard. They took off his bulletproof vest so he could breathe better and one of them grabbed his phone to call 911. And because they saved a life, all six of them got their sentences reduced by a quarter. A musical instrument that could be played without touching it. The theremin was invented by accident in 1920 by the Russian musician and scientist Leon Theremin. He was creating a device that could measure the density of gases, but realized what he made produced sound that changed according to your hand position. The instrument consists of a box with two metal antennas on the sides and oscillators that control the frequency and amplitude of sound. The electrical signals produced by the instrument are then sent to a loudspeaker. The first antenna is on the right, which controls the pitch. The closer you place your hand, the sharper the sound is. The farther you move your hand away from the antenna, the louder it will be. The theremin has been used several times to create themes for television shows and was played in the 70s by Jimmy Page, who's the founder of the Led Zeppelin band. 